Hello, this is Andrew Wolf. In this video, I'm going to talk about acute renal failure. Now, I want to make a point that acute renal failure and acute kidney injury are often used sort of synonymously in clinical practice, but they are not synonyms. And I want to talk about how they are similar and how they are different. Now, uh, acute renal failure can cause acute kidney injury, particularly um, there are various mechanisms to cause injury to the nephron. And also acute kidney injury can lead to acute renal failure, but they are not synonymous. Acute kidney injury uh, talks about, it refers to injury to the cells inside the nephron. And acute renal failure talks about, it refers, refers to uh, the failure for the kidney to perform its normal functions. For example, the kidney loses its ability to excrete wastes and in the labs we see a increase in B1 and creatinine. Also, um, the, with acute renal failure, we, uh, the kidney is no longer able to maintain a balance of electrolytes and we see a increase in, um, in plasma potassium, which can be quite dangerous. Um, and we can also see other derangements of electrolytes with uh, decreases in, uh, in plasma sodium concentration. And also we can see imbalances in, um, in pH as well. Now, there, I want to talk about three different causes for acute renal failure. The first is um, pre-renal, and this really refers to um, the kidneys failing because there is a problem with blood flow to the nephron. Now the second cause is, is the opposite of that. It's uh, renal failure that's caused by obstruction um, beyond the nephron. So this is called post-renal failure and we end up with an obstruction in the ureters or the bladder and this causes a disruption of the, of the ability of the kidneys to perform its function acutely. Now the third type is renal failure that is caused by damage to the nephron itself. Now this could be caused um, by damage to the glomerulus in the glomerular nephritis or it could be caused by damage to the tubular epithelial cells. Okay, Okay, so I wanted to start by talking about pre-renal failure first. Now, pre-renal failure really refers to renal failure that is due to uh, disruptions in flow to the glomerulus. So if we have decreased flow to the glomerulus, um, then this can interfere with the uh, nephron's ability to perform its functions. So this really refers to um, decreased flow through the afferent arterioles. Now several things can cause this. Chief among them is decreased cardiac output. Now um, we could have decreased cardiac output um, because we have a person that has just a, a hypotension um, or we could have decreased cardiac output um, because we have a patient that has congestive heart failure. So you know if we have a patient that has um, a ejection fraction that decreases from a normal of 55 percent to a uh, to a very low level of 20 percent because they've just had an acute MI and lost the function of much of their left ventricle then this will cause acute renal failure due to um, acute congestive heart failure. Now sort of related to blood pressure um, you know the most common cause of, of hypotension is often volume so these are sort of related. Blood pressure could also drop because of massive vasoconstriction or it may drop because of decreased volume. Now I made the point here that um, with decreased volume you're going to see um, you're going to see decreased uh, jugular venous distension. And with CHF, you're actually going to see increased jugular venous distension. So if you have a patient that's going into renal failure, um, you know, it's, it's a good thing to uh, sort of keep those things in mind. Now, the next part of acute renal failure, uh, pre-renal acute renal failure, um, I want to talk about is renal failure that's caused by vasoconstriction. Now, Vasoconstriction in this day and age is most commonly caused by derangements in prostaglandin. Prostaglandins in the kidneys um, cause vasodilation of the afferent arteriole. 
However, there are is a class of medications that most of you are familiar with, of course known as NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory uh, medications, and these interfere with prostaglandins. Now this is obviously beneficial um, when we are trying to block prostaglandins in the periphery of the body where um, where the prostaglandins are causing inflammation and pain. However, um, the NSAIDs are blocking prostaglandins throughout the body and so it interferes with the prostaglandins effect um, on causing vasodilation or maintaining a uh, proper vasodilation in the afferent arterioles and this can cause vasoconstriction and it can cause pre-renal acute renal failure in patients that are susceptible particularly patients that are uh, have uh, decreased volume status. Now the third um, cause of pre-renal acute renal failure is vasoocclusion. Now this is most frequently caused by emboli or uh, arterial sclerosis of the um, of the arteries that are feeding the liver, the kidney. Now if you have emboli or microemboli that are um, disrupting the flow to many nephrons, you are going to have um, pre-renal failure that is causing intrarenal failure because you'll have ischemia and necrosis. Now decreased cardiac output and vasoconstriction, if it is severe enough, can do the same thing. If you decrease blood flow through the afferent arterioles to such an extent that it not only interferes with the function of the nephron but actually causes um, damage to the nephron itself, to the cells within the nephron due to ischemia and necrosis, then this will lead to intrarenal failure. Now intrarenal failure really is, um, caused, is caused by damage to the nephron and the damage to the nephron is maybe transient in that cells are injured to the point where the nephron is injured to the point where it cannot function uh, or it could be permanent where the damage to the nephron is so severe that the nephron um, become scarred and completely dysfunctional. Now in most times in clinical practice when we have acute renal failure it is transient even if it is intrarenal. So there is injury to the cells, there is injury to the nephron, but the nephron is able to repair itself and recover once blood flow is, um, is brought back to normal through the glomerulus. Now in the nephron, there are two general parts that could be damaged. The, the glomerulus could be damaged or the tubular epithelium could be damaged. And this sort of helps uh, guide us to two possible sort of general causes of intrarenal failure. So if you have damage to the glomerulus, uh, you have intrarenal failure that is caused by glomerulonephritis. If you have damage to the tubular epithelium, then you end up with intrarenal, acute uh, renal failure from intrarenal causes. That is due to damage to, uh, to the tubular epithelium, which is known as acute tubular uh, necrosis. So these are both intrarenal causes of acute renal failure. Now, glomerulonephritis may be caused by infection, and um, infectious causes what happens with um, when you have an infection is that you actually have bacteria, most commonly strep, that is bound appropriately to immunoglobulin A. Now what happens is we end up with a bunch of bacteria, or actually you end up with little parts of bacteria, the protein and such, that bind to the immunoglobulin A and then you end up with these big sort of conglomerates of the immunoglobulin with the proteins and um, when you know these sort of float through the bloodstream and you end up in the glomerulus and you can see here these are the endothelial cells with the um, fenestra and then behind them we have the podocytes with our little slit pores and these tiny little thing uh, tiny little fenestrations and slit pores um, get clogged up by these big conglomerates of immunoglobulin and, and proteins and once they get clogged in there they end up causing inflammation of the glomerulus hence glomerulonephritis so we end up with severe inflammation in this area and um, it also disrupts the uh, filtration through the glomerulus and hence it causes uh, acute renal failure. 
Now, the next cause of glomerulonephritis is actually an autoimmune reaction. And this is actually very similar to the infectious uh, reaction, except, except the immunoglobulins are not binding with bacteria, the proteins from bacteria. They're actually binding with self proteins. An example is, of, of this is a type of glomerulonephritis called rapid progressive glomerulonephritis that is caused, um, that is also caused uh, called pouchy immune glomerulonephritis. And this is caused by anti-neutrophil antibodies that um, bind with uh, proteins on neutrophils and cause the exact same reaction. You end up uh, clogging up the fenestrations of the epithelial cells inside the glomerulus and clogging up the slit pores and causing inflammation. So again, these are anti-neutrophil uh, proteins and it causes the exact same reaction. And the inflammation um, makes the process worse. The glomerulus is not able to function because it's not able to filter and you we end up with acute renal failure. Now the next type of intrarenal acute renal failure is due to acute tubular necrosis. If you remember the tubules in the kidneys, um, the epithelial cells are very um, dependent on a constant supply of oxygen and energy. They're hypermetabolic and they do not deal well with ischemia. They are injured very, very easily. Now if you remember these cells are very hypermetabolic. In fact, they behind the central nervous system, this the epithelial cells in the kidney are the most hypermetabolic cells inside the body itself. You can see here inside the cell I drew a bunch of little purple mitochondria cells. Remember there's they these cells are packed with mitochondria. They are constantly making a lot of ATP to run the sodium potassium pumps and other ion pumps within the cells. So they're very very hypermetabolic. Now if you look inside one of these tubules and you look at the epithelial cells, when they get injured, they actually start to slough off. So when we have ischemia and necrosis, we end up having the cells slough off and they actually can clog the tubules. And when you clog the tubules, then you don't um, get a adequate flow through of filtrate through the tubules. And this obviously is going to interfere with the function of the kidney and it's actually going to cause a type of post-renal failure. Now before I, I get into talking about post-renal failure, I want to talk a little bit about other causes of acute tubular necrosis. So ischemia is one of the causes. Another major class of causes are drugs and toxins. Again, the, the epithelial cells are of uh, the tubules are again very sensitive to loss of oxygen, but they also are very can be very sensitive to drugs and toxins. And obviously, if you have injury, uh, direct injury to the epithelial cells, the epithelial cells can be destroyed and they cause the same problems that uh, I mentioned when we talked about ischemia. Now, a third type of acute tubular necrosis is due to hemolysis. Now, hemolysis can um, cause direct injury to the epithelial cells, just like drugs and toxins, because hemoglobin, you know, obviously the uh, breakdown product, particularly the heme and hemoglobin, can be directly toxic to the epithelial cells in the, in the tubules. Um, also, you know, hemolysis can also cause a glomerulonephritis because the breakdown products of red blood cells and um, the coagulation that can be stimulated by the uh, rupturing of red blood cells can cause a microangiopathy and damage the glomerulus itself, sort of clog up and damage the glomerulus. So hemolysis can cause um, a intrarenal failure um, and damage to the nephron due in both the glomerulus and the tubules. Lastly, I want to talk about post-renal failure. Now with post-renal failure, you need to think about uh, urine that is has flowing um, freely from the nephron and into the renal pelvis and down the ureters to the bladder. And then from the bladder out the urethra. So post-renal failure is caused by something that disrupts this flow. Most commonly, it is caused by uh, renal calculi or kidney stones that can clog up the ureters or 
the urethra itself and cause a backflow of urine into the nephron. It also can be caused by masses like from bladder cancer or it can be caused by um, masses in the uh, in or around the urethra compressing on the urethra like severe um, benign prostatic hypertrophy or prostate cancer. Now anything that can, that disrupts the flow of urine from the renal pelvis will cause a backflow or back pressure in the nephron. And if you have significant back pressure in the nephron, if you take trace it all the way back up to Bowman's capsule and you increase the pressure enough in Bowman's capsule, then um, you no longer have a net filtration pressure where you have a much greater pressure, hydrostatic pressure, coming from the glomerulus and pushing fluid across the membrane into the Bowman's capsule. Remember, because filtration pressure is um, caused by a different a difference between the high pressure in the glomerulus and the low pressure in Bowman's capsule. But if you increase the pressure in Bowman's capsule, then you're no longer going to have flow of plasma across the glomerulus or flow of filtrate across the glomerulus. And this will, uh, again, inter interfere with the kidney ability to function and you'll end up with post renal failure. Okay, before I wrap up, I want to talk about sort of the major causes of acute renal failure, um, at least in my own clinical practice. Volume is probably number one, decreased volume status. Number two is the use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory um, medications. And Number three is acute tubular necrosis that is due to ischemia. And then number four would be drugs and toxins. So these are going to be the, the four things that I would consider most prominently if I have a patient with acute renal failure. So again, pre-renal failure, um, the most common cause is going to be decreased cardiac output due to, due to diminished volume status uh, or NSAIDs. And then um, intrarenal, the main cause would be injury to the epithelial cells of the, tubule, of the tubules due to ischemia or due to drugs and toxins. So this sort of scheme of looking at renal failure is very, very useful because number one, your first step in, um, in trying to diagnose a patient that has acute renal failure is to consider is it pre-renal, intrarenal, and post-renal. Now post-renal is the most rare, but it's always important to rule it out because it is usually easily reversible. If you do an ultrasound and you find someone with a big kidney stone that's, um, that's blocking the ureters, uh, then you can quickly intervene and take care of the problem and you're done. So, uh, you know, always consider it even though it's probably the least common um, that, that cause of acute renal failure. Then you, um, and I'm not going to get into the details here, but there are ways to differentiate between whether it's pre-renal or intrarenal. If it's pre-renal, you know, you're going to consider is the patient on NSAIDs or do they have decreased volume or both. If it is intrarenal, then you are um, going to decide, okay, is does this patient have ischemia or are there drugs or toxins that are potentially uh, causing injury to the epithelial cells of the tubules. Okay, so this concludes my video on acute renal failure. I hope this was helpful to you and uh, as always you are welcome to ask questions in the comments below. And I'm going to put up a couple of links so you can have quick and easy access to my other physiology uh, videos, including the uh, quick and easy access to the physiology of the renal system. Thank you very much.